What's going on, Rodway Nation? Jake Seymour here for another episode of the GRD Podcast. As always, I'm joined with Kyle Bax and Reed Miller. Guys, how are we doing today? Pretty good. good. Waiting for some James Harden news. Yeah, yeah it's bound to happen at some point, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. But we're going to go on to the West. Um, you know, obviously, last a couple episodes ago, we did the East. I don't know when you guys have seen this. Depends when I decide to upload. Uh, that episode's in order. The East what? But, <laughs> the East, playoff. Oh. Yeah, the playoff picture of the conference, yeah. So you guys saw the East predictions. Now we're going to move on to the West and the award show, kind of like a part two to that. Uh, so we just Wait, let's start off from the – Hang on, because um, I have two different uh, standings in case this isn't true or not. But is James Harden on the Rockets for this hypothetical? I didn't put him on. James, oh, so I you're going – you're operating as if James Harden is not going to be on the Rockets. Yes. Okay. I had him as if I was. didn't – I'll be honest. I didn't – I just went on the assumption because I honestly thought he'd be gone. Um, okay. by now, I'll be honest. So, <laughs> no, that's fine. I didn't even include the Rockets. I'll be straight up. I didn't because it's Jesus. James Harden. Spoiler. Spoiler. Whoa. I'll take. Nah. I don't right, know. So I feel like unless they blew it up, then they would at least still make the playoffs. Because you got to get something back for Harden. Oh, the West is competitive, though. I don't know. All right. So, we'll say he is. We'll say he is. Hypothetically, let's just say the Rockets don't exist because it'd be crazy well, with, like, trade and saying, like, who they get. All right. Well, <laughs> there goes my 60, then. <laughs> Another spoiler. No. Just get on okay. the spoil those standings. I'm just, I didn't include the Rocks on the list. I just went on the assumption that James Harden is not there. All right. Um, you're at, all right Reed, all right, did you have him or not have him on the Rockets? I did not. Ah, so I'm just the odd one out then. Okay. That's all right. It's what it is. These predictions are not going to be perfect as always, but we're, we're going to hit the majority of them. I know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit almost every single one because I just I, – I can just predict it so well, you know. So we're going to get down. We're going to start for the 10th and work our way up to the one seed. If you guys – forgot or whatever we're doing one to ten because there might be playing games for like the seven eight ninth and tenth seeds so that's why we're doing our top ten versus our top eight so at the tenth seed i got the grizzlies uh i like the grizzlies a lot i thought they did pretty good last year um obviously john Morant had a breakout rookie season uh, i hope he continues like that i hope he doesn't have a sophomore slump that would be pretty bad um i almost just like the grizzlies i thought they they had a good run on um, they played in the playing game in the bubble um you know got some experience and the playoffs, if you want to call it that. So, I know I like John, John Moran a lot. I think he's going to be a superstar in the league one day, or at least an all-star at the very least. So, I think he has a pretty high ceiling. Yeah, they got a lot of young, hungry guys that just kind of know how to play as a team. Uh, they'll have Justin, uh, Justice Winslow uh, next year added to that young core. Um, I just think they're really young, but they have a bright future. Uh, I did not make my ten a uh, top ten. Uh, number ten, I have the Pelicans. Um Obviously, you got Zion and their vets that they had in Steven Adams and Eric Bledsoe. And you got Brendan Ingram, who uh, had a breakout season last year. I just think they're, an- there's, they're another year out from the playoffs. They could still make it as a 10 seed this year with the new rule of the uh, play-in tournament. But as far as regular season goes, I s- just think they still have a lot of learning left to do. I also had the Pelicans as my 10 seed. Um, everything that Reed said, I'm just kind of – quickly taking the Rockets off, but yeah. <laughs> um, the Pelicans are definitely a good team. Um, we'll have to see. It's kind of like when Embiid got his massive contract after playing only like 30 games. Like We'll have to see if he's actually made of the stuff with Zion because he's only played like, what, 20, 25 games? So he's probably the real deal, but we'll have to see. I'm going to get to the Pelicans in a little bit, but I think they're much bigger than just Zion. They're very, oh, yeah. I think they're a pretty good team. They didn't, wasn't this his year that he got snubbed for most improved? Who's that? Uh, who? Ingram. He got it. Oh, he did get it? Won yeah. it, yeah. I think Graham should have won it on Charlotte. That guy was filthy. I mean, no all-star. Yeah, but Ingram was... True. No, true. That's why, I mean, I th- feel like he could have won it, though. I, I mean, his numbers got better, but yeah. Ingram's team got so much better, yeah. like, with him. No, uh, Ingram definitely had a breakout year. I like him a lot. I mean, a lot of people thought he was going to be a bust, you know, a couple years in the league, but he's done good in New Orleans. But moving on to the ninth seed, uh, I got my Phoenix Suns ranked at the number nine seed. Yikes. Um, I just, I like the Suns a lot this year. I mean, obviously, I kind of always hope they do something. They has been a long 10 years not, not making a playoff, so I'm hoping this year they at least make some kind of playing game. I mean, they had a hot streak in the bubble. I mean, eight and zero. Obviously, you know the bubble is totally different than actually playing games and traveling. What you know, whatever. But I don't know. I just like the Suns. Chris Paul is a great player. I feel like the Suns going to bring in that veteran mentality. Obviously, Booker was good. I hope Booker makes an All Star game this year. I feel like he is, or not this year, next year because there's no All Star game this year. Um, 
But I feel like he could play at an all-star level. And then, obviously, DeAndre Ayton. I cannot wait to see Chris Paul and DeAndre Ayton on the court together because I cannot wait to see the alley-oops. I really hope it's like Lob City 2.0, but they actually, you know, win something. Not like Lob City, but I don't know. I'm high on the Suns this year. I like them a lot. So, my number nine is the James Harden less Houston Rockets. Um, and my, I don't know where he's going in my hypothetical, but he's not on the roster. So, I'm going to go, I'm going to talk about the guys like John Wall and Demarcus Cousins. I'm really excited to see these two back on the court. Obviously, they're former teammates in Kentucky, but I like the NBA better when there's a lot of good players. I don't know if that's a hot take, but I miss watching John Wall dominate like he did when he was with Washington. And Boogie, Common, uh, Boogie Cousins down low in the post as an, at an all-star level. If they can get back to that, I think it's enough to get to a playoff standing. But if James Harden's gone from there, I still think they just have enough talent. Obviously, that haul that you'll get from Harden, that'll definitely contribute. We just don't know yet from what team. Um, but I still think the Rockets are competitive at the bare minimum. Enough to get a nine seed. Maybe not a uh, eight seed in the usual playoff format, but this year is different. All right, so for the bottom of my list, I'll admit, it's, it's a little wonky. Um, you can really sub out any team at this point. Um, but if you look at it, number nine, I have the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, I don't hate that. They had a really good pickup with, obviously, drafting high this year. Um, and we get to see Cat and D'Angelo in full effect with that new rookie. But I don't... I don't think Cat personally has enough motivation to really be the star of the team that will carry them to the playoffs and have them be successful. I mean, they could make the eight seed. Uh, with that, I just don't think they would go very far. So I have Timberwolves at number eight, nine. Hey, Kyle. Yeah? Do you know the rookie's name? Uh, it's Edwards, Anthony Edwards. Hey, attaboy. Okay, just <laughs> want to check. <laughs> yeah. I don't hey, like Kyle, do other people, though, unlike Jake, so... Uh, my thing with the Rockets is that I don't hate that pick. No, I don't mind that pick. Um, my thing with the Rockets is that I'm concerned about John Wall's injury. Obviously, he hasn't been in the league for a little bit, so I'm worried that he's not going to be um, like the John Wall that we saw in DC against the Celtics those years. And Demarcus Cousins, well, I mean, when was the last time he played a full year? Uh, obviously, you have James Harden, but I mean, is he going to get moved? So there's just too many like unknowns with me with the Rockets. Where I was like, you know what? They they could, they probably will make the playoffs at some point, but I'm just going to keep them off because I didn't. I just thought like there was too, too many unknowns. And honestly, when I made the list, too, Westbrook is still a Rocket. So I honestly thought there was going to be some chemistry issues there as well. So I don't know. Rockets could Rockets are definitely interesting. But moving on to the eighth seed, I got the Pelicans. I like the Pelicans this year. Uh, obviously, Zion Williamson needs to play a real season and a long season. Um, but, you know, they got a lot of other pieces. Obviously, Lonzo is a decent point guard. Josh Hart's a, you know, a good young guy. Brandy Ingram just coming off that most improved uh, player year ward. So I'm excited to see what he has to do. Steven Adams is a great pickup. I mean, this team is like, you, you know, there's a lot of good things about it. Uh, they could definitely squeak in. But the one thing I will say is that injuries could keep them off this. And also, I mean, this is a very young team. So, I mean, I'm concerned too, like, is it going to be like too much extracurricular activities going on behind the scenes that you don't know about? And is COVID going to affect that? You know, I mean, you can say that for a lot of teams, but I just feel like especially for a young team like the Pelicans, that could be something that really hurts them. So, but I'm excited for the Pelicans. I think they'll, you know, they should do decent. I mean, NBA no. is not testing for marijuana this year, so. Oh, I don't mean, no, I don't mean that kind of stuff. I mean, like, COVID. Like, I mean, we see it in the NFL all the time. Like, the Broncos didn't have a quarterback a couple weeks ago. And, like, you know, they had to play without a quarterback. Is that going to happen to the Pelicans with, like, Lonzo or Zion or something like that? Possible. Um, so, I have Jake's number nine seed, his true hometown team. <laughs> Phoenix Suns as my number eight. Uh, I'm going to eat my own words and give him the more credit than Jake is uh, in these standings, but. I do think Chris Paul is going to help this team a lot. Uh, he's that, definitely that under that uh, the veteran leadership that these young guys need. Uh, I think he can elevate guys like DeAndre Ayton. I already think Devin Booker can play at an all-star level. We saw that last year, but it's going to help him as well. It takes some of the pressure off. Um, I expect maybe an all-star lead from Ayton, thanks to Paul. Um, but the West is just so comp like top-heavy that the Suns could slip into maybe even potentially hold court. I wouldn't be surprised, but... I think a playoff stand at number eight is more than fair for a team that just missed out of last year's playoffs in the bubble. After an eight and no bubble run, still hurts. Yikes. Uh, so this one, this is a pick that you guys might not even have making the playoffs, but Bob Myers and Steve Curry, you crafty motherfuckers, keeping Curry out with his injury, 
I see what you guys did. You did exactly what everyone expected you to do. You picked up an unbelievable, I think he'll be a really, really good center in the league with James Wiseman. I have the Warriors at number eight. I mean, Steph Curry, he's coming back. It would, I'd have him a lot higher if we had Clay Thompson. But when you have Curry, you have if we, What do you if mean? We, if we had Clay Thompson? Me? <laughs> well, listen, I might be a little bit. Jake's a sun bandwagon. I might be a little bit of a warrior. Oh, no, don't call me a bandwagon. You're anyway. Be a 10 years. <laughs> You have Curry, you have Draymond, I have Warriors at number eight, but I would not be shocked at all if they just tanked again and got another generational talent next year. All I'm going to say is we have two completely different takes on the Warriors. That's all I'm going to say. We'll get to it when it comes. For me and Corey, the only two Celtics players, Celtics players, Celtics fans in this podcast. (laughs) Well, here's my bandwagon story. I liked them, and I liked how they played. As soon as they, uh, as soon as KG hit that shot, um, I forget it was at the end of the game. He hit KG. that game winner. KG. Yeah, yeah, K- like way back when, like KG, like twenty twelve. Like <laughs> I forget. So, so the Warriors went seventy three and nine, and I became their biggest fan. No, no, no. no that was no. in twenty. I'll give you that. Was, if that, that's true, twenty twelve. That was four years before the championship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. I didn't really like. I wasn't like go Warriors. But as soon as they started winning, I was like, oh, they're my Western Conference team, as Jake would say. <laughs> my West. Moving on. <laughs> yeah, moving on to my seventh seed. Uh, I got the Portland Trailblazers. Um, I just want to see Damian Lillard just absolutely pop off. I mean, he he like always has a good season. I can can't think of a year off the top of my head that I've been like, wow, he had a bad season. So, I mean, he's always been decent, but, I mean, I just want to see the Blazers do something in the playoffs. I feel like Dane deserves that because, I mean, Dane's a guy that gives, you know, that team his heart and soul and, you know, blood, sweat, and tears, all that stuff. And, I mean, they just get crapped on every year, and it sucks. I mean, I think the highest had been was, what, like a four seed, maybe a three seed at one point. So, I really hope they make the playoffs. I hope they make some noise. Um, I mean, they definitely could, but if they don't win, if they don't do anything in the playoffs this year, damn, you got to get out, bro. Like you got you, you got to leave because they're not going to do anything for you. Like pretty sure he's locked in for the foreseeable future. To get a trade or something, get out. Just get out. I like I don't want I because I like Damian Lillard. He's a great player and he's I he's a better. He's just a really good player. I like him a lot and like, I feel like he's just wasting his career in um Portland and plus it's in like a small market, all that crap. So well, he not like he's playing in like the L.A. or something. Well, he said well, that's who was it? Was it Paul George? He called a snake. Yeah. For leaving and going to L.A. and teaming up with people. So, he's not going anywhere. No, he's not going anywhere. But, I mean, like, come on, bro. Like, they're not going to do anything to help you out. You got to go. Well, he can't. <laughs> at some point, though. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. I like the Blazers at seven. Yeah. Uh, so, my seven seed, Red Seven, right? Seven? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, my seven is the Utah Jazz. Uh, they just kind of ran back with the same roster as they did last year with the addition of Derek Favors, the return to the team. Um, there's the team that you, they force you to play on a nightly basis. Um, they won't make too much noise in the playoffs. The, they're just a scrappy bunch. Um, expectedly from guys like Donovan Mitchell. Uh, you gotta wonder how much friction there is in that locker room, how it affected them in the playoffs, uh, especially between him and Rudy Gobert. But I expect that to be water under the bridge as it be a whole year since then. Um, but... I, I think the Jazz are a good team, but like I said about the Suns, they're just a loaded West. Uh, I'm assuming you guys have them higher than I do, but Jazz at seven. Ready for this, Jake? For my number seven pick, we have the Phoenix Suns. Look at that. The purple lights uh, and everything. It's good radio. Same for... <laughs> I think I said it earlier, like when the podcast was just being born, I think it was the Spike King episode. The Phoenix Suns need a point guard. They got Chris Paul. Uh, you know, it sucks losing Kelly Oubre, Mr. Sexy, but, uh, you know, it's okay. I, they got Chris Paul, so I think they'll make the seventh seed. Maybe get out of the first round even. Maybe upset the number two seed, but uh, other than that, they're not going much farther than that, and that would be a very hot take to say they even make it out of the first round. I'll take the first round. I'll take anything. The one thing about what was still in the Suns, though, I will bring this up. Oh, yeah. The one... No, we, obviously, Kelly Oubre is a huge loss. He brought, like, a lot to the team, like, just mentality, too. But another pick that, um, obviously, I would have liked the Celtics to get at some point would have been Ricky Rubio. Um, yeah. I mean, that was, a, that was a big loss for the Suns. Obviously, they got Chris Paul, but Ricky Rubio is, like, a guy who's been around the league for a little bit. 
Um, he's good on a lot of teams. I mean, I was hoping at some point a couple years ago when he, I think he was a free agent, uh, the Celtics would pick him up. But, I mean, obviously didn't happen. Uh, I know. I feel like he's a good backup point guard. So, definitely going to be missed. He's back on the Timberwolves, right? Yep. yep. Yeah. So, another reason the Timberwolves won't be good. But moving on to the sixth seed, I got the Dallas Mavericks. Um, I like the Mavericks a lot. But, I, just, I don't know. Every time I feel like I look at the Mavericks, I just see Luka Doncic and, like, Luka Doncic. Like, I don't know. I just feel like like it's like LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Like, he has Porzingis, right? But I just feel like Porzingis always gets hurt. And I'm, I mean, I don't want to say I'm like, you know, banking on him getting injured this year, but I just feel like I can, you know, see him getting injured again. And it's, you know, that sucks because he's a great player and, you know, I want to see him play. But I mean, like, I don't think he's ever played a full season or close to a full season. You know, he, I feel like he's, he always has some kind of injury at some point in his uh, season. So that's why I got to put the Maz at six. All right, Kyle, you go. Yeah, we can't hear you, Reed. I don't know what happened with that. But while you're fixing that, Jake, to go off of your point, I also do have the Mavericks at number six. Uh, expect them to have a really good year. I think if there was, we can now, yeah. Okay, um, I don't know what that was. If there was a time for Luka to start winning some MVPs, maybe it's now. Um you do have a unicorn in Kristaps Porzingis where you don't really have many players like that in the league, but yeah, I have them at number six. Yeah. Um, so I have Golden State at number six. Um, even without Steph Curry and without uh, Clay Thompson, I still think Steph Curry can take that uh, take that team on his back for a playoff seed. Uh, I do like having Wiseman on the team. We'll get to that part later. <laughs> um, but I still think they just they add enough depth to their team that I didn't have last year, bringing in Kelly Oubre. Um, and um, uh, my fan favorite, Brad Wanamaker, <laughs> to the team. That's just some. Uh, that's a decent backup for Steph Curry, I'm not going to lie. I just think it wasn't going to fit in Boston, but I do like this team. You know, they're going to miss out on Clay Thompson for another year. Yeah, Clay Thompson would have been a great addition for the Warriors team this year, especially with Wiseman. Uh, moving on to the fifth seed, I got the Jazz at five. Um, obviously there's some chemistry issues between Gobert and Mitchell, but free, as you said, I mean, I expect that just to be water on, under the bridge, you know, got to move past that. I mean, if you want to win, I don't see it being a huge problem. I like Donovan a lot. I like Gobert a lot and they have a lot of pieces, nice pieces around that. Um, and they've always feel like they're always in the mix. You know, I feel like they could have, they could have done something last year, but obviously there was those chemistry issues we saw in the bubble. So hopefully those are all worked out and uh, they have a good season. Yeah, so that's uh, my number five. Uh, you, Kyle, did you have Dallas at six? Spoiler. But, I did. Okay, yes, yeah, Dallas is my five. Um, I think they got better in most departments, and Luca had carried them to one of the most efficient offensive seasons we've seen in a long time with a much worse roster. And then you bring in a guy like Josh Richardson, who I think will play well off of Luca, And I think Chris Dobbs can help get taken to that next level like Luca helped him do this year. Um I think home court's within reach for this team. I don't think that's much of a stretch, but I think Luca is ready to take that step even just his third year. Yeah, fair enough. For my five seed, I have the Utah Jizz. Um, okay. They're going to be a little bit better. Um, I mean, they really showed a lot, though. Uh, who the fuck did they play? Didn't they play the Nuggets in the first round? And they showed a lot of heart against them. Uh, I think they were the sixth seed last year, so... Oh. Having everyone come together, I think I don't think the chemistry issues are going to be a problem. Um, I believe the reports that they worked it all out. If they didn't, expect them to fall. But I have Utah Jizz at number five. You guys are higher on them than I am. I liked Mitchell a lot. I like, I I like Gobert like a lot. Like I said, the playoffs they too. really kind of showed that they're a good team. I mean, the one thing I'll I mean I'll say like I'm big on the on a really good guard and a really good big man. Like that's just like the basketball I like to watch. Um, so, I mean, but I mean, it goes back to the Suns, like, you know, obviously CP3 and Aiden and, you know, they're no Mitchell or uh, Gobert, but obviously, you know, Gobert and uh, Mitchell, they're both really good players at the garden center position Two of my favorite positions. So I don't know. I like to watch that. I mean, that's why I like watching all the film on the Kobe Shaq Lakers, because I mean, it's like the way they just ran the floor and they, you know, ran the offense. It was just fun to watch. Uh, moving on to my fourth seed. I got, um, uh, I think you guys probably have a, a little higher, but I just feel like they got a, a lot worse. And obviously, I don't know if I like their coach, but I got the Clippers. Um, obviously, they just signed uh, Paul George to that insane deal. Um, I'm pulling it right now. I believe, yeah. So it was a uh, Paul George was extended for 190 
on top of the 35 guaranteed for the season. And it also, I believe Woj also said it's what, 230 guaranteed, 230 with, no, I'm sorry, 226 million over the next five years with incentives. So with that being said, I feel like he's already committing to the Clippers. And if they have a bad year, that's going to be bad for the Clippers with Paul George. Cause obviously we play off P, we know how that went. So if he has a bad season, I would not be surprised if Kawhi leaves. Um, but with that being said, too, I think a four seat isn't bad for that Clippers team. Uh, you know, they can just barely squeak in, play the Jazz, you know, hypothetically on my thing at five, come out of that, and they're going to play either the Lakers or, oh, spoiler there, or the, you know, whoever the eight seed is. Um, I don't know. I mean, obviously the coach, too, Tyron Lue. I'm not a big Tyron Lue fan. I feel like he was just one of LeBron's puppets. No offense to Ty, Ty Lue, but I mean, like, look, I saw so many times watching those Cavs team, LeBron be like, Ty Lue, get out of the way. And, like, he'd just be in the huddle, and Ty Lue would be, like, not in the huddle. And, like, I, like you can't watch that and tell me that Tyron Lue, you know, coached that team. So that's why I got the Clippers right there. They do have a decent coaching staff behind him, though, so maybe, you know, that can boost them up, boost them up a little bit. And they lost Montrez Harrell, the sixth man of the year, which is I thought was a big piece. So, I don't know, definitely going to be interesting with this Clippers team. Um, so I got Denver at number four. Uh, I think they impressed greatly in the uh, NBA bubble. We saw Jamal Murray take that leap and just go on the offensive tear. But I think he's one of the players that benefited from the bubble environment that maybe wouldn't have had much success without that environment and maybe the Nuggets wouldn't have gone so far. Uh, I'm still high on them. I just think they just got to go out and do it again. Uh, they still can. But as from what we've seen so far, I just feel more comfortable playing them at a four seed. And losing Jeremy Grant, I think he's going to set them back a little bit. I don't think that was talked about enough. Yeah, it was. Nuggets at four? Nuggets at four. That's what I have. Hmm. I'm going to shock the world here because maybe I just absolutely love Dame Dalla, but I have the Portland Trailblazers at number four. They were an eight seed last year, but they didn't have their big man all year in Nurkic. Uh, I think he makes a huge difference in that team. A lot of people were saying if there was a team that was going to upset the one seed, then it would have been them. So I have Blazers at number four. You know what's funny about the Blazers is that they have Whiteside. And I feel like I haven't heard a lot from Whiteside. He's on the Kings now. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Well, I mean, I was going to say last year, too. Like last year, he was on the Blazers. I didn't hear a lot from him. I forgot he got moved. Yeah, but he um, still was dominant. I think he still averaged. He's double. still dominant. He just didn't like. I just he was just like every time I feel like I turn on something, I saw oh, Hassan Whiteside uh, highlights on really Miami pick up. I thought we could like really use him because he's just such a dominant rebounder. But yeah, I'm happy with you, Tristan. Don't worry. No, oh, Tristan's a good pickup. Uh, moving on to that third seed, though, I'm high on the Warriors, man. I like this Warriors oh. team a lot. I think Steph Curry is going to have a bounce back year like carry this team to third seed i love wiseman again the guard big man that's like my favorite you know two you know little duo right there i got the warriors at three i just think they're gonna come back i'm wiggins i'm looking at you man you gotta you gotta like play better please um Draymond green obviously is there um you know obviously two clay thompson that hurts a lot that hurts uh, like a lot for this team but um i know i like the warriors at three so my three seeds the clippers uh you talked about how Brandon and Tyron Lue is a downgrade. I'm going to disagree there because you like because you made the point about Lue being LeBron's puppet. Whereas I think Lou, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain what I'm going to say here, but I think Lue can be Kawhi's puppet. What I mean by that is I think that Doc Rivers wasn't able to defer to his superstars and Leonard and Paul George, and it led to some uh, friction between the two, especially given Rivers and Paul George's uh, personal history. <laughs> Um, but I think that Lou can let this like, let the stars play to the team, meaning let Leonard and even Paul George, who we kind of laugh at his contract, but he he could prove to be worth it this year, and uh, it could prove it could make Kawhi feel like resigning if they this team sees some success. And I think that uh, having a coach like Lou can allow his stars to play to their strengths, and it could lead to a deeper, more promising run than they had in 2020. Personally, I would have rather seen Sam Cassell get that job. I mean, he's been on that staff for a while. I felt like he deserved it. Um, but I don't know. Not my team. I don't really care who their coach is, I guess. Reed brings up a very, very, very underrated point in the fact that Ty Lu will just let the players play, which is why I also have the Clippers at number three. I don't think uh, it's going to be tough because Mr. 7.3 on 9%, you know, he really sucked this year in the playoffs. So and MVP. Yeah. So I, I don't know if he's going to be 
able because I mean, if you're going to be a championship team, he's got to put up better numbers than that, obviously. So I don't know how far they'll go, but regular season he was fine. Losing Trez really hurts, but they did add Ibaka, which is a nice pickup for them. So he's a yeah, he's a championship experience that you cater to Kawhi Leonard. You think Kawhi Leonard didn't want that move? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, clips at three. My two seed, I got the Denver Nuggets. I feel like the Nuggets are always a two seed, to be honest. Like they won't make some noise in the playoffs, but they'll make the two seed. Um, I like I like uh, Yochik and Murray. I like them a lot. Um, again, the guard big man Terry. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean obviously they just got a lot around it. I like I think Bull Bull. I want I'm interested to see how he's going to play this year because he had a decent bubble. I mean he didn't play out too too much, but I thought you know the times he's out there he did a lot of good things, also did a lot of bad things. So be interested to see how they use him and you know what happens. Um, I think they re-signed Millsap as well, so hopefully he can do something for the team too. So, yeah, I got the Nuggets at three. Oh, I'm sorry, two. So I want you guys to clip this later down the road. I got the Portland Trailblazers at number two. Oh, um, They had a lot of depth to the team. Like we said last year, they didn't have Yusuf Nurkic, and uh, you that was missing on the court, you could see that. Um, they, they brought in guys like Derek Jones and Ennis Cantor. They brought him back. Uh, Melo's back, obviously. And you saw a guy like Gary Trent Jr. who had little to no touches and minutes in the regular season, and he exploded in that bubble and was a large part in getting Portland to the playoffs. Um, Dame just unbelievable, too. Uh, I think this team's just going to be see some very strong regular season success. They just got to go out and prove it in the playoffs. They got Melo back, too. Yeah, I said that. Oh, I missed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm high on Portland. Higher high on Portland. I got, I, like I said, I have them as a seventh seed, but... I hope they do good. I like I like Dane a lot. Yeah, I can respect Portland at two. Uh, personally, I have the Denver Chicken Nuggets at number two just because, um, I mean, you have, in my opinion, the best center in the league. Jamal Murray had a real, real big glow up in the NBA bubble where he just kind of started shining into the star that, you know, you kind of want to watch. When he was trying to force shots at the end of the game to get to 50 against Boston, kind of made me hate him a little bit, but... You know, he did really well in the bubble. Uh, he made me kind of a player that I don't want to root against. I mean, they were down 3-1 twice and came back. So, yeah, Nuggets at two. You guys ready for this hot take at one? Oh, God. It, 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 I got the Minnesota Timberwolves at the once. No, I'm playing. I got the Lakers. I mean, come on. It's the defending chance, LeBron James, Anthony Davis. You guys really thought I was going to put the Lakers out of the playoffs and put the Timberwolves ahead of them? Come on. You forgot the Raptors is all I'll say. Oh, I didn't forget them. Oh. I didn't forget them. That was my take. I don't know if they're going to make the playoffs this year. That was my take. Um, but no, I mean, I'm, it's the Lakers. They're the, they're the defending champions. They got Montrez. They got LeBron. AD. Do I, shall I continue or do you guys get the point? Like, It's the Lakers. They're going to be good. They're the best team in the league that got even better. <laughs> they brought in Dennis yep. Schroeder and Montrez Harrell. It's, it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be a tough slant again. I, I do think that I mean, you make this argument every year for the last few years, but LeBron got older, and he ages like a fine wine. You really don't know when his motor is going to stop, and I don't expect that to stop in 2021. Not much else to it. Yeah, obvious Lakers number one. I would also like to extend an invitation to Jake Seymour's funeral for anyone who would like to come. Uh, he was killed. Reed Miller just absolutely annihilated him right there. So anytime you, know, you guys want to come and say your goodbyes to Jake, please feel free. Raptors but, aren't yeah. making the playoffs. Come on now. Lakers at number one. Easy. Defending champs. Going to be back-to-back champs. Going to unfortunately pass the Celtics. Everyone's expecting them to. So. Yeah, I'll give you that. Especially if like they continue to play like how they played and injuries don't become a thing. I will say this, though. 2020 has been a crazy year. Uh, quick turnaround in the league. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if LeBron starts to have a down year this year, to be honest. I mean, if, they, if there's going to be if there's gonna be a year, it's going to be this year. But what is a down year for him? It's like Tom Brady. What's a down year for him? That, no, that's another good point. What does that look like? I, I also know. think they brought in enough to where AD is kind of shifting to be the focus of the team. I mean, he hit that game winner. I forget what team it was against, but game winning three. I mean, Denver. they went to him, not LeBron. It I think Denver. it's starting to be. Yeah, yeah, it was Denver. I think it's starting to be AD's kind of time to shine. He just signed that extension with them. So at this point, LeBron could go out and average 20. I think he averaged like 27-ish last year. Go out and average 20, and I think they still win the title. I think... Um, I'm not going to say the title yet, because I'm not going to vote for Banner 18 for the Lakers, but 
Oh, first heel guarantee. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. The Lakers are going to be good. They're the Lakers. I mean, every everyone wants to go play in L.A. like that. Um, and they're a destination, you know? I mean, what else are you going to expect from a team like that? You can either go to L.A. with the pretty women and beaches, or you can come to Boston where we have bearded women. But, damn, we are a good team. <laughs> the one thing I'll say about LeBron and the, you know, you can say the down year, I was really interested and I was looking forward to it on obviously didn't happen last year with the playoffs because um, obviously there was a big gap between the players, right? They ended March 11th. They didn't come back till like July 31st, right? That's a basically an entire off season. And that gave LeBron time to regroup and reset. Right. And he's not like the, you know, us guys that couldn't go to the gym and, you know, work out. He has his own personal gym. So he was able to, you know, maintain shape. Right. So I'm curious to see now is if he, goes heavier in the load management and like you guys said like let ad take over more or if he just goes like you know plays to like it out see if he can see if he can snag an mvp or something because i mean that's the one thing i feel like he's chasing obviously the championships as well but i feel like he wants another mvp and you could say he got snubbed last year i guess so does he you know, go all out and then how does that affect him for the playoffs you know that was something i was interested to see last year because i felt like maybe he could slow down the playoffs but i mean obviously the big offseason you couldn't you know you couldn't tell that I think with the short and off season this year, you're going to see a lot more load management from him. I think. Uh, I think you will too. He's protecting his investment, and that investment is himself, especially getting at such an older age and signed that extension to uh, match up with his son joining the league. I think he's just preserving his body to that point so he can play with his son, um, and that's going to you're going to start seeing that this year with less time for rest since the NBA Finals up until now, and in a 70, 72 game series uh, season. I just think we're going to see a handful of load management games. And I think the roster around him is ready for that and is well constructed, well constructed to support that. If he wins this year and then wins next year as well, and then just goes places to the sun, you can't say this guy didn't have the best career in NBA history. Not no. like he's not the goat, but he's going to have a great sure career. You know? Sure. I can. Okay. He's had six yes, title yes. losses. Sure. I can. Yeah. But if he wins two more, oof, oof. I don't know. What I don't mean? know. Let's turn around to our next uh, awards, the player awards. Yeah, so we'll start with the end. Uh, you guys want to start with – we'll start we'll with the, like, the, the, the crappy we'll ones up. first. We'll start with the crappy – the quote crappy ones, I'm going to call them. The ones that like – not are like anticipated, I guess you could say. The non-MVP awards? <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> non-MVP awards. So we'll start off with uh, – uh, we'll do coach of the year. You guys want to do that one first? Yeah. yeah. All right, my coach of the year, Doc Rivers. I'm high on the Sixers. I like them a lot. I think Doc Rivers is a great coach, one of my favorites in the league. And if anyone's going to get through to Simmons and in uh, and Embiid, it's going to be Doc Rivers. Obviously, you know, we talked about before, that whole front office and coaching staff got revamped, and they look like – the Sixers look like legit. Um, obviously, this, you know, they've been good the last couple of years, but their front office and coaching staff has, was horrible. So I'm excited to see, you know, what Doc Rivers will do with this team and Maury. So I'm going to say Doc Rivers wins coach of the year. So I'm going to go, if my prediction's right and the Blazers get the two-seed, I'm going to go, it has to go to Terry Stiles, I feel. Uh, you saw how they kind of struggled last year in the regular season. They couldn't get it together despite having that roster, uh, talent on the roster. They added even more, and I think they were well-coached, not just because uh, they had success because of Dame and his performance in the bubble, but I think they were a very well-coached team. Um, if all can go right and they can get a two, even three-seed, and they show that they are a strong, cohesive unit heading into the playoffs. I don't see how you can't give it to Terry Stotts. Like we said, that low market team competing against the Titans of the NBA. It just seems like an easy decision to me. Fair enough. I also went with a number two seed for my predictions. Uh, I chose someone who's going to pull a Nick Nurse and win his first year of being a coach. I, <laughs> believe it or not, picked Steve Nash. I feel like with that Nets team, if they pull off a number two seed and you know, manage to stay together and not fall apart at the seams, then, yeah. I think if you get into Steve Nash, then Kyrie Irving is going to want half that trophy. <laughs> He's going to break it over his knee and give him the, the bottom half of the trophy. Yeah. I, I think they're going to have a good year, but I think he'll win Coach of the Year solely on keeping, you know, KD and Kyrie, you know, off each other all the time and hating each other. because Kyrie. They're friends, but, you know, Kyrie can go suck a dick. So we'll see how that happens. Kyrie, Kyrie's emotions can definitely get the best of them. I mean, we started in Boston, obviously. So that's all I'll say about Kyrie. I mean, I think we all know how we all feel about Kyrie on this podcast. Complicated guy. Um, but moving on, we'll do most improved. Uh, 
I mar- most improved. I picked Markel Fultz. Um, I'm not giving up on this guy yet. There, I think he has one more legitimate shot to say, that, look, I'm not a bust. Like, um, obviously, he's had those shoulder problems and he forgot how to shoot. That was the problem. Uh, I think he has some knee problems as well at some point. So, we'll say about Markel Fultz. He has one more shot to do it. If he doesn't do anything this year, okay, you're done. You're a bust. You're like the Anthony Bennett of the world. Like, you're done. But I'm going to hit one more shot to redeem himself. I feel like he could do decent on that Orlando Magic team. There's a lot of good players on that team. No, I don't want to say good, but, you know, decent. Definitely can sneak into the playoffs like we said last episode. So I'm just going to say this. Bolts, you got one more shot, man. If you want to do something in this league, win, go out and win most improved this year. So I'm high on Fultz, too. He's, he was my runner-up. Uh, I'm not going to give him one more shot because the dude's only 22 years old. Uh, and unlike Anthony Bennett, he is on a, ro- a roster, a starting spot on a roster. Uh, I think the Magic will go wherever he goes. But my most improved is our close personal friend, friend of the program. Mine's Jalen Brown. Uh, without Gordon Hayward and Kemba Walker for the first month or so, I think the opportunity is there for Jalen Brown to take that leap. Every year since he's come in, he's added another layer to his game. And I just think you got to work on At this point, you got to work on honing in on your skill set and your ticky-tack aspects of your game. You can jump to that all-star level. Uh, I'm predicting he will get to the all-star game this year and potentially all defense. Uh, but I had the Celtics at a two-seed, and Jalen Brown's going to be largely responsible for that. He's simply too smart not to take that next step that he's taken every year in the NBA. Yeah, I mean, I think you're right when you say he's going to be an all-star. I mean, anyone who thinks he's not all-star level is just wrong at this point. He definitely is. My most improved, and this is probably someone that you guys didn't even think of. He went 14-5-3 last year, shot 40% from the field, 32% 32% from three, and just added someone who went 20, average 20 and eight in college. I have RJ Barrett being the most improved player for the New York Knicks. The Knicks are going to be a 15th seed, buddy. They're going to be dead last. Oh, that's okay. No, they'll improve. <laughs> that's the reason why Grant didn't do it. <laughs> they'll improve from the 15th to the 14th. That's improvement. You're right. <laughs> Knicks suck. The one thing I was about Jalen Brown, um, he should have been an All Star last year easily. He got snubbed hard, just like Bradley Beal, he got snubbed. Um, but you know, the one thing I feel like he didn't make it, and I talked to Mike Gorman about this. I saw him at Celtics game, and I asked him. I said, "Hey, why do you think, you know, like obviously Tatum and Walker both great players, and I mean, people forget also. Well, before I bring this up, people forget how much of a tear Walker was on in the beginning of that last season. He like, he was crazy before his injuries hit him. Um, so that's why he got that starting spot." But because of that, I asked him, I was like, hey, you know, obviously Tatum and Walker deserved it, but Brown did too. Why didn't he get it? And he told me, he's like, you know, maybe one of those things where the league didn't want to give the, give three guys to the Celtics. They wanted to, you know, divvy it up. And obviously Tatum and Walker were the clear cut too. And you could have made an argument against Brown and for Brown. So that's why they're like, you know, what, we'll just give against them. And honestly, I agree with that because there's – I, yeah, I don't think it was quite right last year, but this year I think it's, it's all laid out for him. Yeah, I feel like he could definitely do it. And on, honestly, too, like I said this about Booker. I was hoping he would make it, but – Brandon Booker are the two guys I want to see make it, and I wrote an article of both of them, you know, when they got snubbed. But it's not going to happen this year because obviously no All Star game, which sucks. So maybe next year because I know I know Corey, you, uh, he said it last episode. He was saying, um, you know, Jalen Brown's camp, you know, wanted to, you know, was ready for this and was ready for him to do it, and you know, obviously it's going to be pushed back a year, which you know, kind of stinks. But uh, moving on, we got the Sixth Man of the Year. I talked about this guy last episode. I'm going with Jeff T with Sixth Man of the Year. I feel like he's going to be so critical for the Celtics run. I mean, I feel like, you know, Kemba Walker is going to miss the first month of the season. If he can come in and start and do really well and then slide to the bench and come out with the bench unit and help them out and, um, you know, lead the Celtics through the bench and, you know, help out Kemba Walker with the load management, I feel like that's going to be someone that can help us out because my definition of a sixth man is that, yeah, you, you come off the bench and do stuff, but you can start as well. That's how I kind of think of the sixth man. So that's why I put Teague as my sixth man. So people are going to call me biased for having Jalen Brown's win most improved. They're definitely going to call you biased for putting 33, 32-year-old Jeff Green as your sixth man of the year. But I, I know. I like Teague. I like him there. Mine's, uh, I got Tyler Hero. Uh, he's one of the young star on the rise that we saw in the bubble. Lighting up the Celtics on all ends of the floor, but he wasn't a starter. And I expect them to dole him out as the sixth man once again with Duncan Robinson starting over him. But it does not say that Hero can't close out games, not say that he won't be a vital part of the offense. What other bench player around the league has such a vital role to the team than Tyler Hero? He's in that elite bunch as far as a second unit goes. I'm not saying he's an elite player just yet. He's only 20 years old. But I think that he's 
that X Factor you have on your team that no one else has. Like he's he's a sharpshooter, a young star. He's fearless, and I can't see why he can't get six man of the year, especially if Miami has that strong season that they built off of last year's playoffs. We cannot hear you, Kyle. Oh, you're muted, dude. We cannot hear you. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know for a fact I'm going to get shit for this. Because, <laughs> like I said, this guy is not even on a playoff team. But someone who I think, based on Jake's definition, is really important to their team but doesn't start. You don't have him. What? I said you don't have him. Yeah, imagine. Um he averaged 15 points last year on 42% shooting from three. I have Davis Bertans as my sixth man of the year. I don't hate that. I like that. The Ooh. only problem sure he's gonna be bench, I don't... What was that? Are you sure he's coming off the bench? I... It's weird, because he did last year. It's just with Westbrook coming to the team, I don't know if they're going to start him or if they're going to keep him on the bench because they need that bench help when Westbrook finally comes off. That's why I'm I'm back and forth because honestly Jeff Teague did run through my mind a little bit, but I didn't want to put him that high. That's interesting. I don't know if he's if he's off the bench, then yeah, he's a very good bench player for anyone to have. But yeah, because he was 29 minutes a game last year. Because from what I saw, he did come most games off the bench, and they started like Thomas Bryant with uh, center. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. It depends with Westbrook, but. I might the defensive player of the year. I'm going to go with AD. I feel like he should have won it last year because he was, you know, pretty good in the defensive end. And obviously, you know, Giannis took it. But I'm going to go – I'll go with AD here. I like him a lot. Obviously, you know, superstar level player. Uh, you know, can play on the offensive end, great offensive player. But, I, I mean, I like him on the defense end as well, if not more. So, that's why I'm making him the defensive player of the year. Uh, so, I'm going to a fellow Heat player. I'm going to Bam Adebayo. Uh, I think you saw his defensive impact on the floor in the Celtics series and in the Bucks series. As soon as players would get by the guards or the other forwards on the floor, you had to run into Bam, and it's like you're likely getting sent back, uh, especially with that end of the game clutch block he had on Jason Tatum uh, in the playoff series that ultimately I think won them the series, even though it was early on in game one or two. I think that just momentum just carried them. Uh, they're one of the best defensive teams in the league, and when you're the best defensive player on the best defensive team, I, I just think you, you, there's no way you can – no, you can't give it to that guy. His impact goes – beyond the numbers, beyond the standings. Yeah, he's definitely a good candidate. I have, <laughs> I guess we all decided to go a little bit of a green teamer, but with this one, I think since he got snubbed last year and this team has a lot of grit to it, I honestly have Marcus Smart winning Defensive Player of the Year. Just because I think he is going to start at the beginning of the season, I don't think it's going to be Jeff T. Hey. For, uh, so. Tell me the last time a guard won Defensive Player of the Year. Give me a second. It was exactly. 1995. It was Gary Hare. It was Gary Payton. Oh, look at that. How long ago was that? Like 1995 was 1995 ago. So, defensive Player of the Year is for a big man. The guards get enough, and the little guys that get enough you know, attention. It's for it's the big man awards. So I'll take that away from the big guys. I would love if it was Marcus Smart. I'm not going to say that. I'm just saying, like, yeah, it we'll see. He won't get credit. No, I'm saying I agree. I would love that. I'm saying it stinks that he won't get any credit because they're going to dole out to a big guy every year. It's yeah. a big guy award, in my opinion. It, it's just how it is. I like the big man over any guard. Not to say that, you know, he doesn't deserve it. I mean, he's a great player and he's a great defender. But, I mean, come on. It's defensive player of the year. Give it to a big man. <laughs> on right. the flip side, On the flip side of that, when was the last time a big man won MVP? I don't know. Uh, a lot sooner, I can tell you that much. Giannis, yeah, Giannis, maybe by ten Giannis, years. Giannis, it's powerful. Does Giannis count? Are you counting Giannis? Giannis is positionless. I mean, Giannis is he does everything. Seven feet. seven feet is big. That's a big man. <laughs> <laughs> so according to Jake, all you need to play basketball is a point guard and a big man, and you need a really good defensive big man, and you will be a championship caliber team. No, I just like I like a good guard and a good. Big man. That's just, I don't know. I just, Wait, there's something, that I built, something about that kind of basketball that just appeals to me a lot. Well, if you go back and look at championship teams, and this is like a really weird stat, but if you go back and look at all the teams that have ever won championships and look how many don't have like a Hall of Fame center, an all star level center, even 
not many of them do. It's kind of weird that the Warriors kind of created this mold where they had fucking Zaza, who was their starting center. But if you go back, a lot of teams have really good starting centers that win championships. So that's why I'm so big on the Celtics getting one. All-star snub Zaza Pachulia. They had yeah. Bogut, too, in the beginning. He wasn't bad. That's the next uh, one, rookie of the year. Yeah, rookie of the year. I'm sticking with the big man here again. I'm going Wiseman, rookie of the year. I like him a lot on that Warriors team. So, I mean, I just feel like there's a lot of shooters on that Warriors team. And, you know, obviously they're going to miss the ball. I mean, it doesn't always go in. And Wiseman's a big guy, so he's going to get a couple offensive boards, put it back up. Those are easy buckets for him. And obviously, you know, hit the hit Wiseman with it a little bit. I don't know how they're going to – if they're even going to attempt to try and say, okay, Wiseman, let's see how you can shoot the ball. But I just want to see him sit in the post, give, me, give him the ball, get in the block, dribble it in, boom, boom. You know, like just pound it. Just give it to him and go. Like you don't need to have, make him shoot. Give him, put him on the block and then make him spin and do a hook shot. That's all, that's all he needs to do. Yeah, I took Wiseman too. Uh, I think out of the top rookies in the lottery that he's in to put in the best position to win and have a high role, a big role in that pursuit. Uh, obviously, without Thompson, it's not going to affect him too much because, like you said, most of his games inside is not like on the outside like Thompson. But the Warriors are a playoff-bound team, and Wiseman's going to have a major role in this team. And if he can't live up to those expectations, I think that maybe they won't be a playoff team. But if he can, then the Warriors are a real threat. And as a rookie, and given such a big role, I think that's going to help him over time develop into the future all-star that many think he can be. Yeah. Very big surprise, but I also picked James Wiseman. Oh, look at us. (laughs) Unity. Because I know it's some shitty guy, but who is it? Kevin Looney? Kevon Looney? Kevon Looney, yeah. Yeah. He's their starting center right now. So, I mean, he only played a couple games at Memphis, but we'll see. I think he is going to be. He's a terrible one for who he is, but he's no Wiseman. Well, no, yeah, that's what I mean with Wiseman. He only played a couple college games, but I think he's going to definitely be an upgrade at that position. Because who else do they have? Do they have Collie Stein still? No, he, he um he's on Denver, Dallas? It's some team I looked up recently. Dallas, I think Dallas. it is Dallas. Is Dallas? Yeah. yeah. I was one of the guys, like, I'm really high on Wiseman. Uh, I was one of the guys that when... It was yeah. reported that Danny Ainge and the Warriors were in trade talks. The second pick, I was hoping he was going to pull the trigger because that's how much I like Wiseman. Because I knew I knew Minnesota was going to take Anthony Edwards first overall because they already have a defined big man in Cat. So I already knew Wiseman was going to go second overall, like automatically, unless if you know the Timberwolves traded that pick. Um, but I mean, I would have loved Wiseman on the Celtics. I think he's going to do great on the Warriors, if not do better, to be honest. Like I said, that team is full of shooters, you know. So don't be surprised, you know. Obviously, they're going to miss, and you know Wiseman's going to get the off of the board and put it right back up. I did forget Wiggins existed, though, when I ranked them in number eight. (laughs) I saw something that was like, uh, Andrew Wiggins was like the Mia Khalifa. It was like they had all the high school talent, and they just didn't make it in the pros. I saw someone, there was someone about that on Twitter I saw. Maybe chuckle. (laughs) Yes. But uh, I don't Andrew Wiggins, man, if he has a good year this year, I mean, he might be, you know, he could be most improved if he has a good season. All right, what's the next one we got? MVP? Yeah. Oh, yeah, MVP. I was going to say, that was the last one. No, we got MVP. All right. So, I'm in high in the Warriors. No, no. I'm Brett in high in the Warriors. Victor, I knew it. Brett, yeah. <laughs> I'm giving it to Stephen Curry. I feel like he's just going to come out and be like, oh, you guys thought I was, you know, bad last year. I had that crappy finals performance. You guys thought I was gone, and hi, here I am. And just absolutely light it up like he did a couple, you know, back in, what, 2015, 16, when he had those, you know, MVP runs. Um I just I hope he comes back and it's just good. I mean, that's why I have him ranked so high. I feel like he's going to just come back and just shoot the lights out. He had a whole season off. He's like, he's ready to go. I mean, obviously say what you want about him in the finals, but this guy loves basketball. He's a good shooter. And I mean, I mean, some of those shots he used to hit back, you know, before he got hurt, he used to take the ball from half court and just hum it and boom, it would go in. Like stuff like that you can't teach, you know? So uh, I'm, I'm going to pick Seth Curry for MVP. So I also want the point guard. If this player can have the type of performance he had in the bubble, there's no way you can't give him the MVP. I got Damian Lillard. Mm-hmm. If the opponent gets number two, he's going to be largely responsible for that. Like I said, I gave the case for Terry Stotts, but he's he was the MVP in the NBA bubble. And if he can replicate like that that kind of performance, which I wish, I think he can without fans in the arena too. Like it's the same environment but different. You're not in a bubble, but that was an MVP caliber performance over those eight games and in the playoffs. I think he's a dark horse. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like, you got guys like 
Giannis is probably the most likely to repeat, but voter fatigue is also a thing, and players are going to get tired of voting for the same people over and over. I think that Luka Doncic is also a good one, but he might be a year or two away, but I think it's Dame's. I think it's it's now or never for him. In this se- upcoming season, I think it could be Damian Lillard as a dark horse candidate. I give you that. I like that pick. Assuming they do good. So, I just want to say before I give you my MVP pick that anyone that thought that Steph Curry was washed or Steph Curry was no longer going to be good, send a DM to Boston Sports Center six one seven on Instagram. I guarantee you get maybe one. I mean, who thought Curry was done? No. No. So who's your pick? So who's your pick? Uh, the first guy to three-peat since Larry Bird did it in 1984 to 1986. The vanilla pick. Giannis will win MVP in 2021. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I think he does pull off the three-peat. The last person to do it was Larry Bird. So another guy in green is going to do it. That's the wrong color green. It's the wrong shade. Yeah, it's still green. Nope, it's the wrong green. There's only one green and it's Celtics green. You don't think Vervetique's, like, real in the NBA? I mean, it could, but I just, I think that with how dominant he's probably going to be, it's going to be hard. I mean, Drew Holiday makes that team good, like, scary good. So, if he's yeah, putting up 30. Westbrook got- averaged a triple-double for, like, two consecutive seasons and only won it once. So, like... Uh, I mean, if we're going off dominance, I mean, how dominant can you get but from that? It's the most valuable, and I think I just think there are more players more valuable in the NBA, obviously. Not saying that, like, obviously they're better, but, like, there's a difference between valuable yeah. to your team and better, and I just think there are more players that are valuable to their team than Westbrook was during those years. Yeah, I just feel like Giannis is at that point right now where he's, like, kind of where LeBron was a little bit ago in his Miami days where the league just sucks him off so much that they want to see him do well. Because he's honestly going to be the face of the league once LeBron leaves. So, I, I was tempted. I, I literally just I had Luka Doncic in my thing, in my notepad up until three seconds, like thirty seconds before it was my turn. But I think that they'll be playing for Luka down the road. And but the NBA might want to force Luka down our throats like they do on social media and weird NBA Twitter. Well, uh, I have a question. What made you switch off Luka to Lillard? Not ready. I, I, no, no, no. That's fair. I. I want to change it up, but also I think that Blazers are going to be a better have a better season. I think that they'll be playing for Luka down the road, that they may want to wait for that, and they meaning like the voters and the media. Um, if Dame's truly deserving, but you can't not give it to him, I think. I think they want a fresh face. Uh, NBA likes to draw up a lot of narratives, whether or not they're real, and I think that they, they're going to reward Dame. Not reward Dame, but he's proving his loyalty, and that can pay off for a strong regular season campaign and an MVP win, then I think it's deserving. I, I think too, also with that, it's a small market. And I feel like in, I feel like, you know, they like giving it to small market teams just so you don't give them like a little, you know, boost kind of, um, I mean, when was the last Portland player to do that? Was it Bill Walton in the seventies? I think, I think so. probably. Well, I mean, that's the only guy that comes to mind. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I'll idea. say a dark horse for MVP. If we really go off the assumption that LeBron's going to, like, kind of load manage this year, um, like, if he goes full-blown, he'll be in the MVP conversation, right? That's not really a dark horse, right? But if he really, like, kind of takes, you know, some time off, you know, make sure he's good for the playoffs and all that stuff, and AD really, you know, carries his Lakers team, I wouldn't be surprised if AD gets it, to be honest. Um, you know, if he, like, really carries the team and, you know, does good and, you know, puts up good numbers, I wouldn't be surprised if AD wins it. I just can't see a player with a teammate – of LeBron winning, you know what I mean? Yeah, but my, my argument is that LeBron doesn't play a lot of games, and in turn, AD carries the Lakers team to the yep. first seed, you know? And yeah. it's becomes, it becomes more of, like, AD's team instead of LeBron's. But with that being said, too, how does LeBron take that? That's, that would be my question. Does LeBron, like, is LeBron ready to be the second guy on the team? He's never been a second option on the team. I'm not, I'm not even ready to call him that now. I'm not, I'm not ready to say that either. I'm just saying, like, if we think maybe, like, it could happen, then you know that might be a dark horse, but I don't know if LeBron will ever be a second option on the team. I don't know if he if he's like, been, you know, mentally able to do that because he's been so he's been the first guy in every team he's played on. I mean, even think back to those Miami days. He was it was you know when it was him Wade and Bosch. It was his team. I mean, yes, it was Wade County, but Wade even said like, no, it, like we figured out that if we wanted to win, it was his team. Yeah, now that I think that's the same same goes for the Warriors team when KD joined. Like I'm gonna say this. 
I think after that first ring, having KD on that team became a necessity rather than a luxury. Yeah, it did. But yeah, I, I even even maybe even when when they lost in that uh, Cavs series, I know he, they just came out the literally statistically best regular season team in the NBA. I think Kevin Durant, on, in hindsight, became such a necessity for that team, and it became KD's team. And comparing yeah, you had guys, what you have guys like Draymond Green, you know, putting that in. Like, you know, like, you know, like, hey, we did this without you. You know, that kind of narrative. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I'm saying that, obviously, AD's a necessity for the team, but I just still think that's LeBron's team. I don't think AD's come in and taking that mantle just yet. That's something that aggravates me about Jim Green, that he thought he was bigger than what he was, and then he realized the season, oh, crap, I actually need these guys. It's not, I can't do this by myself. He's not, like, he's not that type of player. He couldn't do it by himself when he had Steph and, and Thompson. He, he was never doing it by himself. He, I don't know if he was ever trying. That's what I'm saying. But, like, he has the mentality that he thinks he's better than, you know. Uh, I just felt like he always thought, like, oh, yeah, we won the championship, and I was a big piece, you know, I was a big piece of it. I'm the I'm the big three, I, it's my, you know. Yeah, but I wouldn't I wouldn't consider him a big three because I feel like a big three, you got to be able to do it by yourself, and he I mean, can't, yeah. you know. So I felt like that big three, when they first won it, I would have said it was Thompson and Curry, obviously. And then, honestly, I probably would have thrown in either – Probably Iggy, maybe. I mean, he was very crucial in those playoffs. Harrison Extremely Barnes. crucial. You know, Chris Barnes, too. Uh, or, uh, you know, so, I don't know. I'll give him that. I'm Jeremiah Green. I don't like his attitude sometimes. I just think there's a lot of good players in the NBA and have been for a while. It's a hot take. And we're going to have to end it with that hot take. Very yeah. good players in the NBA. And make sure to, you know, send us a DM if you're liking these lists to all the viewers. Because yeah, we'll, uh, we'll put out graphics for your visual learners since if you don't want to listen to us through your ears. I don't blame you. Yeah, maybe we'll do a list. Best duos in the NBA. Maybe. That's, more, we, that's more work. We could do that. We could do it with duos. I feel like <laughs> we have the offseason. You guys podcast real quick, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, I'll say that for the offseason. A little quick little, uh, I mean, it'll probably be out time, so you guys see that, but that's still graphic working that's with. If you guys see, listening to this on the YouTube side, uh, you know, whip that up for the Eastern Conference, working on the West. So, uh, yeah, that's been the GRD podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of breaking down the Western Conference and the awards. Make sure you guys give us a, a subscription on YouTube and make sure you guys subscribe on Apple Podcasts and Spotify or wherever you listen to this podcast. Guys, thanks for watching this week's episode. And we'll catch you guys next week.